In this video, we're going to be looking at the ISO performance of the Canon 5D Mark IV. We'll look at a variety of different images that uh, exemplify the performance across the spectrum of the ISO settings that the camera is capable of. But before we dive into the details of my test, I wanted to make sure that we're all on the same, the same page when it comes to what ISO actually is. And quoting my ebook, Photographing the Fourth Dimension Time, where I discuss the exposure triangle, in regard to ISO, ISO numbers represent the sensitivity of a camera sensor to light. Sensor sensitivity has a direct impact on exposure durations. Higher ISO numbers represent higher sensitivity of your camera sensor to light and thus require shorter exposure durations. The opposite is true for lower ISO numbers that represent lower sensitivity to light and require longer exposures. Note, an ISO value increases by a factor of two both in numerical value and overall sensitivity to light. So all settings lighting and subject being equal, the exposure time of a photo taken at ISO 200 will be half that of an equivalent photo taken at ISO 100. Conversely, an, a photo taken at ISO 100 will require an exposure twice as long as that of an image taken at ISO 200. And the ISO standard was built upon historical standards used for film and interestingly enough, both introduce a similar side effect um, to photos taken at a higher ISO. Higher ISO settings introduce grain in film and digital noise, in di and as well as in digital photographs. Both grain and digital noise are random and extraneous information that can detract from an image. Now, as this all plays out uh, over the different generations of the Canon 5D series, you have different ISO ranges per body per generation. The Canon 5D II, when it came out, had an ISO range of 100 to 6400, and you could expand it to a range of 50 to 25,600. <clears throat> Seems pretty good. When you got to the 5D III, the ISO range expanded from 100 to 25,600, and its overall expanded range was 50 to 102,400. Now that sounds really, really impressive, and it, and it was, right? A lot of people love the Canon 5D III for this reason. The Canon 5DS, when it came out, which is a much more specialized camera with a higher resolution sensor, they went backwards to focus more on um, better performing lower ISOs uh, for studio type work. And that range is 100 to 6400 and is expandable to 50 to 12,800. But fast forward to the Canon 5D4, and now you have a range of 100 to 32,000, just a little bit more than the 5D3, and it's expandable to 50, excuse me, expandable from 50 to 102,400. That sounds very similar, or it sounds familiar, because that is exactly the same range as the Canon 5D3. Now, what's important to note here is that while the range may be similar between the Canon 5D4 and the Canon 5D3, there is a distinct difference that basically allows for making use of on-chip analog to digital conversion, or an ADC, and it's also used by the Canon 1DX Mark II and the new Canon 80D, well, relatively new. <clears throat> so. Why this is important is that the new chip design incorporating the analog to digital conversion introduces far less noise to the analog signal captured by the sensor by digitizing it as early as possible. The end result is the camera's ability to better distinguish image information from interfering signals that create noise in low signal areas, namely the shadows and lower midtones of your image. And that's exactly what I'm going to show you in these test images, that the performance and the image quality looks great because of this technology that's been applied in this new um, generation of the 5D body. And it's one of the many reasons why I think the Canon 5D4 is an incredibly solid camera to start using. It's going to be a great workhorse for a lot of people. So let's dive in and look at some of my tests now that we're all on the same page. Um, one of the things that I did as far as a test to see how well the images looked was to take the exact same um, 
to, to take the exact same image with the almost identical settings, um, but the only thing uh, changing was the ISO. And what this is going to do is it's going to show you how much light the camera can actually capture. We talk about ISO sensitivity all the time, but what does that really translate to? So what I did is I set up a, uh, a still life photo of um, a romantic dessert um, lit only by a single candle. There is no other light in the scene. This is all natural light, all by a single candle. And as we go down from the highest possible ISO setting, uh, 102,400, you can see that there's a lot of, a lot of grain, a, a lot of noise. And remember that this is only changing the ISO value. So the image is going to continue to get darker and you'll see less and less noise. So definitely when we get to ISO 8000, you're seeing a lot less light, but the images start to look a lot cleaner. Um, but for this demonstration, this is just to show you how much light the camera is capable of capturing. And ISO 50, ISO 100, all the way up to like ISO 800 or 1000 are pretty standard for daylight uh, images. So when you're in really low light situations, these higher ISO values are really going to allow you to capture um, a scene uh, that otherwise would have been impossible to capture otherwise. The only downside to this, of course, is that um, higher ISO uh, values introduce um, more digital noise and grain. Now, if we jump to another example of this where I, I keep... Um, I, I keep the aperture the same, but I let the exposure time play out in, a, in conjunction with the ISO adjustment that I'm making. So what does happen in this instance is that exposure times will double as I go down to a lower ISO value because each exposure is roughly um, half the ISO sensitivity. And again, this is taken with a Canon 5D Mark IV, a 50 millimeter f1.4 lens <clears throat> at f2.8. Now at 102,400, you can see the, the grain and the noise. Um, it looks uh, quite noisy, which is what you would expect with this extreme ISO setting. And as we go down in ISO sensitivity, you'll see that these images are starting to look a lot cleaner. And if you look at ISO 4000, for example, um, let's go back over here, you'll see that the image is particularly clean. Um, you'll see a lot more detail, a lot less noise. And if I go back, let's just go back really fast to ISO 51200, you can see the, the drastic difference. Um, but you can see as we continue to go down in the ISO setting, and exposure times are getting longer, that the image is looking cleaner and cleaner and cleaner. Now, like I mentioned earlier, the ISO range between the Canon 5D3 and the Canon 5D4 are very, very similar, right? 50 to 102,400. But it's this introduce, introduction of this new design element, the on-chip analog to digital converter, the ADC, um, that is producing much cleaner images um, at higher ISOs, introducing much less noise and being able to filter out the interfering signal that creates that noise. So it's this, for this reason that I'm really bullish on the Canon 5D4, I think it's a really great uh, progression in the Canon 5D line and why I think it was probably worth the wait to really stick it out to get the 5D4 as uh, your next upgrade. I do have a bunch of other tests uh, that I think you might find valuable in deciding whether or not to uh, use the Canon 5D4 or upgrade and this is one of many. I have other um, tests that go over dynamic range in addition to the ISO sensitivity that we just discussed. Also some extreme long exposures to see how well the sensor technology has improved over time and what kind of aberrations um, are created by extreme long exposures. I also have a dual pixel post-processing uh, demonstration video as well as a dual pixel video autofocus demonstration video. So be sure to check them out. And uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I'd greatly appreciate it. And uh, I look forward to talking to you on the next demo video.